Fifth sentence. The light cloud of great Samadhi. Samadhi is Sanskrit, which is transliterated from Hindu, and it means right to experience normal enjoyment. The Buddha told us that the various enjoyments of sentient beings in the six realms are not normal. All kinds of enjoyment are grouped into five categories. And there are two types of body, there are painful feelings and pleasant feelings. Suffering is also immeasurable and joy is also immeasurable and boundless, and these two categories can be used to cover it. Psychology, we talk about spirit. The physical part has two categories of pain and pleasure. And the psychological part has sorrow and joy. These two categories are the four categories. There is also a large category. There is no suffering or joy in the body, and there is no worry or joy in the mind. It is very good to let go of feeling, but the time is very short, not long. Temporarily let go of pain and happiness in the body, and let go of sorrow and joy in the mind, which is temporary. If this equanimity and feeling can be maintained, it is called samadhi, that is, right feeling. So samadhi is also translated as meditation. All Buddhas and Tathagatas are always equanimous. So suffering and happiness are relative, and sorrow and joy are also relative. The West is called the paradise of ultimate bliss. We often use our own wrong ideas to define the happiness in the West. Thinking that the happiness in the West is the joy of pain and happiness, which is wrong. It is not the joy of suffering and happiness. So when you go to the Western land of ultimate bliss, you don't have any of the five feelings of suffering, happiness, sorrow, joy, and equanimity and that is called the land of ultimate bliss. We need to understand this meaning. The great samadhi can break through all obstacles. Our modern scientists know that there are many obstacles in this world. For example, they discovered three-dimensional space. We are living in three-dimensional space now. And we know that there are four-dimensional spaces and five-dimensional spaces. Layman Huang Nianzu said that. He saw scientific reports. And he said that scientists have confirmed that there are at least 11 degrees of space. If it is not enough according to Buddhism, how do we know? We know how these different dimensions come about. And we understand this truth. The Buddha said that these different dimensions are the manifestation of delusions, distinctions, and attachments. We know that all sentient beings have immeasurable delusions, distinctions, and attachments. Therefore, time and space also have infinite degrees. How can there are only 10 degrees or 20 degrees? This is true and not false. Even in the three-dimensional space, there are still many obstacles in the environment we live in now. Talking about three degrees and four degrees is to say broad comprehensively, just like our Buddhists talk about the ten Dharma realms. Talking about three degrees and four degrees is to say broad comprehensively, just like our Buddhists talk about the ten Dharma realms. However, there are many, many, countless in each Dharma realm. If you get Samadhi, live in Samadhi. Break all delusions, distinctions, and attachments. All of this boundary will be broken. There are different levels of concentration in meditation. The small concentration breaks through the first and second layers and the large concentration can break through a few more levels. We know this situation very well. 
There are some people who practice concentration in the world. When we were in World War II, an old gentleman told me in the past. During the war, there is a Taoist priest in that place in Yangshi. This Taoist priest had supernatural powers, in fact, he had fixed skills, concentration skill. The place where he lived was relatively low-lying, and the Taoist told him to move, saying that the place would be flooded in a few days. The Taoist also lived nearby, so he sent someone to see if the Taoist had moved. The Taoist moved, and then he moved too. Sure enough, there was nothing wrong, it coincided with the time he said. There was no sign of it at all, but the mountain torrent really broke out and the place was flooded. So he knew that Taoist priests had supernatural powers. Not long after, the Taoist told him that he saw a war breaking out in a place and told him the direction and approximate distance, and he saw it. This old man is a soldier, a high-ranking military officer. He said that what the Taoist preached was wrong. He had never heard of it, and there was no such news. As a result, three months later, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. He had seen the location, situation, and distance that he had told him, the old man, three months ago. It can be seen in this time that the past, present, and future exist at the same time. It is a small concentration, not a big concentration. It can break through three months. And he can see things after three months. He is in his small house in the mountains, he can see Pearl Harbor. In Hawaii thousands of miles away, this is small concentration. He can see the Bible code that is currently on the market 3,000 years later. And his concentration is much better than that of the Taoist priest. This Taoist priest can only see the environment of several months, years, and thousands of miles, such a realm. The Samadhi is incredible, and can break through all obstacles. The Tathagata is completely free from delusions, distinctions, and attachments, so his ability is perfect, omniscient and omnipotent. We understand this truth, and then we believe what the Buddha said. What he said is true, not false. He does have this ability. He has this ability, and so do we. We have lost this ability today because we have no samadhi, and there are a lot of delusions, distinctions, and attachments in our mind every day. And this is where we suffer. We must wake up and understand. Good. That's all for today. Amitabha.